Hello again, everyone. Today I am going to be creating a little bit of a Franken pen for you all. So this has been something that I have been doing a lot lately, swapping nibs out on various fountain pens to see, you know, how those nibs work on different pens and how I like the feel of the pen as a whole. And this particular transformation, which is going to happen here, was inspired by this particular little device here. Um, I guess I can call it a device. I don't know what else I'd call it. So this is from Flexible Nib Factory, and this is a what is called a housing that will fit in this pen, but hold the nib that is associated with this pen. So this pen normally takes a Bach nib, size six, and this pen is a Platinum 3776. So basically this is a Bach housing that will hold a 3776 uh, music nib specifically and feed because there actually is a different um, sizing that you need for the music nib specifically. So it came in this little container here from Flexible Nib Factory. Flexible Nib Factory actually has a uh, a broad assortment of sort of Franken pen uh, facilitators, so to speak. So uh, you can get housing for, uh, I think it's only Bach and Yowo um, pens or, or pens that take Bach or Yowo -Yo 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 housing. And then uh, there are a variety of different nibs that it will take. I will put a link down below to Flexible Nib Factory and you can take a look for yourself and see whether you want to try Again, something like this is probably going to void your manufacturing manufacturer's warranty. So uh, do keep that in mind. Uh, I, I have this Platinum 3776 with a music nib that I purchased very cheaply off of Amazon, uh, where the, which some people consider sort of the gray market, which, you know, Google that if you're interested in learning more about the gray market, it's, it's very complicated. But uh, it's kind of up in the air as to whether or not my manufacturer warranty would be valid in any case. So, um, and you know, you know, research for yourself. I, I'm not an expert on all those things, but I did want to mention that if you ever want to try this yourself. So uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to find a new pen situation for this nib is that this nib, which here you can see the music nib on the 3776 is a real ink hog and it uses a ton of ink and this is only a cartridge converter pen. I've cleaned this out. It has a little bit of condensation from where I um, cleaned this out with water and probably didn't allow it to dry <laughs> enough before putting it back in here. But uh, it only takes a converter or uh, cartridges and I wanted to have more ink capacity. I also was just not turning to this pen very much just because it's this, you know, standard black body on a Platinum 3776 and it wasn't that exciting. I have a few other of these that I turn to more. Uh, so I wanted to try something different. So this is a uh, Keras Customs Vertex pen. It's a fountain pen, obviously, uh, and it comes in a variety of colors and you can kind of customize it a little bit. Again, I'll put the link to Keras Customs website where I purchased this and you can pick the body color. I think you can at least pick black or white like I chose and then you can choose the uh, nib section color as well. And I chose sort of this bottle glass green, which comes off as almost clear here on the camera and it's, it's a very cloudy, rainy day today. So <laughs> my lighting is probably a little different than it could be on some days but um, it's a very light light green color it's sort of similar to the Franklin Christoph antique glass look but the, I would say this is even lighter than that uh, and it comes off better in some lights but anyway so this is the combination I chose and this originally came with well I, I specified that I wanted a bold Bach nib it came in here with a converter but this pen can be converted to eyedropper, which is what I'm going to, eyedropper fill, I should say, which is what I'm going to be doing today because um, the reason why you can do that with this pen is because the body here is all plastic. If you have any metal parts in any pen, you're not gonna be able to eyedropper fill because the ink could corrode the metal pieces that are exposed. So uh, one other thing to know about the flexible nib factory housing is you cannot use it with a converter. 
I'm pretty sure consistently most of, if not all, of the housings that allow you to do this Franken pen thing uh, will only work with um, eyedropper fill pens. Normally there would be a little, um, I think what they call the nipple at the bottom here, where a, a cartridge or converter would attach to, and they don't have that. I think it makes it a little bit easier to swap around different nibs if you don't have that specific little device there, but I don't know. That's just my assumption. But, uh, and this has a specific number, B, which indicates Bach, and then, you know, it has all these, um, abbreviations here but this is specific for the music nib and if you have a 3776 with a different type of nib that you want to uh, use instead you would need to get a different one I think pretty much all other nibs if not all nibs will use the other type of housing so just make sure you get the right one for your pen so this will allow me to have much more ink capacity for this larger uh, nib here and so that's what we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna leave that open for now, uh, put that off to the side. So the ink that I'm going to be filling this with today is Kobe Inks number 57, which is their hydrangea color. I used to have this in my Pilot Custom 823, and I've since taken it out because I wanted a more saturated ink for that pen. But uh, for this, I think, well, well, we'll see. I'll test it at the end, uh, assuming I can get the ink flowing. Uh, with with this nib, I'm hoping I can get some good variation of color with this somewhat lighter color of ink. So we'll see. I will fill it and test it at the end. So the other, oh, and this is just an eyedropper to put the, the ink from here into the pen, and I'll do that on camera as well. So this is what they call a Goulet grip. It's, uh, I bought it from Goulet Pens. And it's just this little piece of rubber. And this is going to facilitate me taking this nib off of here. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to put everything sort of off to the side other than this 3776. And I'm going to put a paper towel down. I've thoroughly cleaned this pen and this pen. So uh, there shouldn't be a whole lot of ink residue, but just so that I have a place, a soft place to put the nib once I've pulled it out. I will leave this here. So how, um, okay, so you can wrap it around and grab down here, but you have to be really careful if you're grabbing down here, you have to be really careful not to squish the tines together. So I'm actually going to go top and bottom here. I'm gonna wrap this around and grab it sort of like this or like this uh, to pull this nib out. And so I'm trying to be very careful here. And I'm gonna twist a little bit. Actually, I can probably just take that out. Sometimes they take a little bit of finagling to get out. And that's often why I don't do this on camera because sometimes this can take a little while. Uh, if it gets to be too long, I will edit and um, come back, but they can be pretty, pretty well seated. Oh, I do need to take out the converter, so that might help. Sorry about that. Because this um, nib unit is attached to the converter. So let's see, I'm kind of grasping this pretty hard here, pulling with this grip. I mean, if I didn't have this grip, this would never come out of here. So I'm basically just wiggling a little bit each time. And, hmm. It's really kind of stuck. I'm gonna try with just my fingers. I've never tried to take this particular nib out before, so it could be pretty well wedged in there. It shouldn't be glued though. It should be able to come out. So let's see. And sometimes you do have to look out for the fins here on the, on the um, on the feed so that you don't damage them. These are pretty sturdy, so I'm not all that worried about it, but I do want to make sure that I am not pressing too hard or grasping too hard. Oh, there we go, okay, excellent. So it did take just a little bit of wiggling. It looks like there is some ink left on the feed because I've never actually taken this nib out of here and the prior ink was a pretty dark, ink. So I do actually have some water here 
So I'm gonna dip that nib into the water so that I can get that excess ink off. It's another reason to have this towel here before I switch it over. Okay, get the entire nib wet so that I can loosen up that ink. And I think we're about there. I think I'm gonna do the same with the feed just because um, like I said, I did not take the feed out when I cleaned this pen the last time because it was like super, <laughs> super on there. So as you can see, there's still some green ink. I think that I had, um, what did I have in here? I think I had Sailor Gentle Epinard in here before. So I also don't want that green ink to mix with the uh, purple ink because those are opposite colors on the color spectrum and we would end up with mud. Okay So they always tell you to pay, to pay special attention to the location of the feed on your nib So this actually was down a little bit and there's no natural stop necessarily down here um, so one also one um, sort of guidepost to use as well let me zoom in a little bit so you can see a little better. That you can use as well as these little um, lines here. If you line up the top line with the little flanges here, that should be about where that should be once it's seated in the um, in the housing here. So this is the housing, which should in theory, fit perfectly. <laughs> uh, so there, there, is no, there aren't any particular grooves in here, so there's not any particular orientation in which this needs to go in, but I'm gonna line it up with, I'm gonna line the sides of the nib up with the, um, with the little uh, slots in there. There were no slots in the original feed. So let's go ahead and I'm going to make sure that little bottom piece goes into that hole. And lining up both sides. Oops, and it looks like there's a little bit more ink on that nib there. I just wiped it off with my finger. Okay, and again, before I press down, I'm going to make sure that that alignment is right. So I'm pretty sure that that's about where it was before. So I'm just going to hold this entire nib and feed portion and push it in. So I think that that's pretty well seated. Uh, and then you have this little guy sticking out. I do wonder, no, because I th there's, so on the, um, I cannot take this uh, housing out that's in the 3776, but what I'm assuming is on the bottom of that is a little bit of a, um, wider area that does seat onto this, whereas this just has this little bit that sticks out, which is what's gonna be soaking up the ink. So next step, let's see. I did not try this because I didn't wanna get it stuck in here because, um, oh, uh, <laughs> I'm forgetting which pens screw and which ones are uh, just a pop top. So this is a snap cap. Okay, I'm going to put this feed in here and it fits. So success, success. Um, so we won't know, you know, how well the success of writing will work with it. Let me zoom out just a little bit here until I have eyedropper filled this. So um, you would wanna be really careful with that little bit that was sticking down at the bottom of the housing there. Um, this way, it should be fine because it's very well protected in this little area. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna fill up this body. And actually what I didn't get out and I should get out is a little bit of silicone grease. Uh, this has a pretty tight seal, but it's always good to, here's my silicone grease. It's always good to have a little bit of silicone grease on there for extra protection, security. Oh, and this was sideways, so it's all over the place, but you need very little. So I usually just put a little bit on my finger, like that much is probably all I will need. And then I put that around the threads that connect with the body. 
and then I you know, go around a time or two so I can get it into those threads. And basically this works as a barrier to preventing ink from going out of your pen in this area here where, where it is screwed on. So I'm doing this before I dropper fill because it's gonna be very hard for me to put down the barrel with a bunch of ink in it and do this after that. So I think that's probably fine. I'm gonna take a different paper towel off camera here that's very dirty and <laughs> wipe off my the silicone from my hand. And uh, just by laying it here, it shouldn't really get any on the paper towel, but you wanna make sure you don't get it into your ink or any of that kind of thing. So this is the body. I'm gonna fill the inside up to about where the threads are that connect with that inside. So let's um, use that. Okay, so I no longer need the Goulet grip. I can put that off to the side. I no longer need the body and the cap. I will probably keep this in a separate location just in case I want to put it back in there. All right, so let me again put this off to the side a little bit. That's the cap. Let me turn this upside down so that we can get that ink pretty well. I don't need that silicone anymore. Okay, so let's see. This is actually probably gonna be an easier way to use this flatter Kobe bottle. So what I like to do is kind of put the dropper in there a little bit and feel like that. This uh, body is semi-transparent, so I can see on the side here how much ink I'm putting on there. And that's one of the reasons why I chose the white version of this pen, because I did not want a um, version where I would not be able to see the ink level at all if I'm eyedropper filling. Okay. I probably could go a little higher, but I'm gonna stop there for now and I'll rinse this out once we're done here. Okay, and the other thing is I'm, I'm gonna wipe off this interior really quickly here off camera again, because I got a little bit of ink there. And now let's go ahead and try screwing that on. And I can feel that the seal is tighter with that silicone grease in there. Okay, and now I'm gonna turn it upside down and you're gonna see that ink go into this area. So this is an ink window as well. Uh, so when it's closed, you can see it, the ink goes down when it's upright and then it fills up with ink when you go that way. So I'm gonna leave it like this for just a second. I'm going to, uh, will that sit upside down? Hey, how about that? It'll. Just stand like that. So I'm gonna let it sit, saturate into the nib. I'm gonna rinse this off in my same water over here. I wanna make sure that I don't let ink dry in the dropper. You can hear all those fun noises off to the side here. Um, it's pretty easy to clean, especially with inks like this, which are fairly unsaturated or staining, I should say. It's it's fairly saturated, it's just not very staining. And then I usually try to get up in that little entry point a little bit, okay. And then I'm just gonna let that dry off to the side. We don't need our ink anymore. So I'm gonna put that off here too. And then I'm gonna get out my notebook. Whoop, I can probably cover my water up. Of course, I left my notebook like under my computer here. So let me grab that. Okay. Okay, things were slipping. That always happens because I pile things up. <laughs> so this is my uh, fountain pen testing notebook that I have in this Galen leather notebook. I will put a link down below to that setup. It looks like I had some ink bleed here, but that's okay. Okay, so I have to remember that this is a pull cap because if I twist, I could potentially twist that off. Let's see, oh, yep, we've got ink already in there. Oh, and it looks like some ink actually went down into the cap. So that's something that I will need to remember and to try and keep this pen upright um, because this, this particular nib is a gusher. So um, 
Yeah, this is actually great. Oh, I love it. Yeah, this ink with this nib is also fantastic. Okay, so this is a, oops, let's see. Did I, I'm trying to see if I got the times a little out of alignment here. Just seeing for a second, which I can fix later as well. No, I think they're okay. And if anything's a little bit still out of alignment, I can move it around later. So this is a platinum. Let me move that and get it a little closer so you can see. Platinum 3776. 14k gold nib in a Karis Customs Vertex eyedropper. Oops, <laughs> went on there. Hopper uh, fountain pen. Fountain pen. And then uh, what else should I say about this? Oh, the ink. This is Kobe uh, 37. Oh, 37 for a, or is it 57? It's 57. I'm always forgetting, which is also hydrangea. All right, so that worked great. I'm actually really super excited about this. Now I have a big ink reservoir for this particular nib and um, I can write with it longer. This ink is perfect in here, I love it. Okay. But one thing I will have to keep in mind is that it can flow out of the nib with this iteration here. So I'll have to keep this upright when I'm storing it. And actually before I close it, I will get in there. You could, you could use a uh, Q-tip. Right now I'm just using a balled up tissue to kind of get down into that, the top of that cap, which I, I'm not successful at right now. I'm trying to get down in there so that I can get that extra ink out of the cap. All right, and then I'm going to cap that back up. And one of the things that may be sort of a downside to a snap cap fill like this is that uh, anytime you snap the cap on or off, it's essentially sucking ink up or pushing ink down in the nib and feed. But uh, I mean, for the trade-off here, this is great. I, I really, really love this ink and nib combination. So I'm super excited about that. Um, if you're gonna do this yourself, I've, I've sort of listed some of the pitfalls, potential pitfalls and dangers. Um, be really careful with the nib when you take it out. Try to be patient in taking it out so you don't damage the nib. You uh, also could be voiding your warranty. So do at your own risk. <laughs> but I just thought I'd show that to you today and I thought that was kind of fun and I'm very happy with the results and I hope you enjoyed watching that. So uh, that's all I had for you today. Feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Feel free to subscribe, like I said. I hope to see you next time. Uh, but in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much, bye.